My friend lives seem to be perfect. Jay had an excellent education, a top job, a perfect marriage, loyal friends, and a loving family. But under the surface, Jay was fighting a tough battle against serious illness called major depressive disorder. This wasn't just a guess. It was an official diagnosis made by one of the top doctors in her city. During this fight, Jay tried different treatments and medications and also spent weeks in the mental health hospital, watched closely by doctors and nurses there. At the end of her stay, Jay filled out lengthy 50 pages questionnaire to help doctors understand her mental state. The results given by highly skilled doctors were hopeful. They said Jay was getting better and the risk of suicide was low. So they let her leave the hospital. Just two hours after she walked away out of the hospital, Jay fatally intoxicated herself with helium. Sadly, Jay's story is just one among millions like that around the world. Last year, 700,000 people died from suicide, and 20 times that number attempted to take their own lives. In the United States alone, one out of five adults have been diagnosed with major depressive disorder. With depression being the leading cause of suicidal attempts, suicide became a leading cause of death among young adults under the 35 years old. The grim reality is that despite these alarming statistics, the field of psychiatry hasn't seen significant changes in the past 30 years. Think about it this way. If you come to the doctor with severe chest pain, they will run a number of tests, like X-ray, electrocardiography, or blood work, to find out what's wrong and decide how to better treat it. But when it comes to the mental health, things are very different. We rely heavily on the questionnaires and interviews, which can be influenced by personal biases and errors. This can lead to wrong diagnosis, inappropriate treatment, longer and costlier recovery, and in some cases, tragic ends. The lack of the hard data and biological tests doesn't just affect doctors and their patients. It also slows down the development of novel therapeutics. It makes it difficult to design and evaluate clinical trials. It makes it rough to predict how many people would suffer from the mental disorders, how long it will take to recover, and what wider social and economic impact could be. But why this seemingly urgent issue is still without a solution? One of the answers hides in the nature of depression itself. It's heterogeneity. This complex word simply means that depression, despite the same diagnosis, can look and feel different from the one person to another have different origin and thus require a different approach. The way we treat depression right now is largely a guessing game. Doctors prescribe treatments and medications based on the general guidelines, not being able to tailor the treatments according to personal needs. Because everyone's experience with depression is different, it simply means that patients have to try medication after medication after medication before finding one that works, if they find one at all. This trial and error process can be lengthy, emotionally exhausting, and even dangerous, because it can worsen the symptoms and increase the risk of self-harm. Our knowledge of the brain and how it works is at the very early stages. It's like we are at the start line of a marathon. But the good news is that novel technologies like artificial intelligence or machine learning can be game changers. 
they hold potential to unravel the complex nature of mental disorders, develop novel treatments, and ultimately save lives. Imagine a future in which we don't just trying to treat depression, but we actually understand it, we redefine it, and we view it not as a set of symptoms, but as a complex condition with identifiable causes. This is a future that machine learning and artificial intelligence offer us. In this future, we could use a broad range of biological data, such as MRI and PET scans, electroencephalography, electrocardiography, genetic and epigenetics markers, to gain better and comprehensive understanding of what's happening within a person's brain and body. The first step of this future is stratification. Artificial intelligence and machine learning can help us identify specific patterns linked to different depression types and treatment outcomes. This can allow us to group patients in distinct clusters or subtypes, each associated with different symptomatics, different biological markers, and predictable treatment responses. But we don't stop at the stratification. The next step is personalization. Once we identify the depression subtypes, we can move further and improve and tailor treatments according to unique biological profile of the patient. The advancements of technologies can help us understand the neurological and biological causes of depression and depressive symptoms. And this deeper understanding can lead to development of new therapeutics and early identification and even prevention of the mental health disorders. This is not a dream but this is a reality that's gradually taking shape. Recent studies demonstrated that machine learning applied to large sets of the fMRI data or electroencephalography data can actually identify distinct subtypes of depression. Other studies demonstrated that machine learning ha have a potential to predict treatment response for specific antidepressants before treatment begins with incredible accuracy. This progress isn't just about advancing technology or accumulating data. It's about real people, like my friend, Jay. In this future, Jay wouldn't have received just generic diagnosis, major depressive disorder. But instead, her unique biological profile would define her depression subtypes. Her treatment plan would be personalized according to her brain scans or DNA data. AI and human experts would collaborate to better understand her condition and guide her treatment. And maybe then, Jay wouldn't have left hospital towards a tragic end, but towards a beginning of a brighter and healthier future. Thank you.